Breeze Digivolve to... Skiploom! Yeah! Actually evade this trainer. You can get around her, but I want to fight everyone. So let's fight everyone. One attack. That's an interesting Jigglypuff sprite. I'm not used to it. Must be a different sprite. This between gold and silver, or in crystal, or even between red and blue and yellow, there's different sprites usually for a lot of Pokemon. But in Gen 2, there's actually often different sprites even between gold and silver. And then crystal has different ones, so for quite a few Pokemon, there's three different sprites within the same generation. I have an idea of what a, a move I want to teach War Bandits, but I don't have access to that move yet. I get access to it shortly after the gym. Breeze, let's take out the Jigglypuff. Yeah, Skiploom wins. I'm sure, War Banner did most of the work, but Skiploom wins. Go, Breeze. Two more Pokemon, no, two more Jigglypuff. Let's stay in with Breeze. Damage pound eh. flinch or pound just doesn't KO me. At least disabled that goes for headbutt. I think it's random in Gen 1, but in Gen 2 it goes for what you just did. Let's go for poison part. That might just be enough to take it out. Because it's one eighth of dam one eighth of the max health is damage. Yay. Got it. One more Jigglypuff for that one. I'm sending in Proton. Thunder Punch! Ah, I wanted to finish up with Fire Punch. Just to show off its new move, but I guess not. I don't want to wait for the Awakening, so... I guess Jetpack! Jetpack gets more XP out of this. Lame thrower. I'm going to the Pokemon Center. And then when I'm back, it's time to face the gym leader. The third gym leader is standing in front of us. And it's a very infamous one at that. One of the most infamous gym leaders in the entire franchise. Hi, I'm Whitney. Everyone was into Pokemon, so I got into it too. Pokemon are super cute. You want to battle? I'm warning you. I'm good. She is good. She is very good. Naturally, she's beatable. Because the game is beatable. But she can give you a lot, and I mean a lot, of trouble. Curse makes this fight easy. You mean ghost curse or non ghost curse? I can see how both of them help out. Metronome into conversion doesn't work. Warn attack takes out the Clefairy. That's not the dangerous one.
This is the dangerous one. And I have a pretty good strategy for it, I believe. But I want to show you how dangerous it is. Remember that move rollout that I talked about? That's a rock move that's like Fury Cutter, but better. Miltang has it. Miltang is very fast and really strong. On its physical attack, rollout uses physical, the physical attack stat. It doubles in power every time. Up to five in total, then it stops, and if you want to reuse rollout again, it resets. You're lucky if it misses. 10% chance per attack to miss. You can see how even War Bandit with very good stats would have trouble against that mill tank. Stomp. 65 po base power normal move. It's a normal type. Egg at stab. It's also fast, which means the flinching chance from Stomp, which I believe is 30%, can also apply to you. Didn't happen here. However, War Bandit is taken out. There's one more thing. Actually, two more things that make it annoying. And could War Bandit have had that happen to them? So which one are Pokemon or male? Let's send him Breeze. Yeah, it can happen to Breeze. Milk drink. It can heal its own health. So if you think, oh yeah, we got him. They're still fast. They're probably going to move first. They can heal half of their max health. That's another thing this one can do. Now, I do have Poison Powder on it after every one of their turns uh, that I get some poison damage, which is nice. And I haven't been flinched by Stomp yet. So the main thing that worked out really well for me in this fight so far is that rollout missed. It was only a third hit, so we did get two hits in. But really strong. Now, Breeze gets weak to it. Now, there's one more move that's arguably the most annoying. Flinch can be annoying with flinching. Milk drink because it heals them, roll up because it's really strong. But she hasn't yet shown her signature move. And the thing is, the fact that they're stuck into roll out might actually be a good thing. Because that means they can't use milk drink. The thing is, I do believe that in this generation still, and in not in Gen 3, no, I think it was changed in Gen 3 when you take the poison down, because in Gen 1 I do is after you use your attack. Gen 3 was at the end of the turn. So now they don't take poison damage. Proton. I think with the poison damage... I think that they won't be able to take me out, and then with the poison damage, we will be able to take them out. We'll survive this one rollout. And with Proton's new move, we're gonna finish it. Proton, Fire Punch! Never got to see her signature move, but we did see how potentially this can be a very hard fight, especially if you have things that are a very low defense stat, or just have a weakness to rock. If your starter was cynical, you'd have a Kulava at this point. You might, that might be your main Pokemon. Its weak to routes can be, ta can be taken out by it pretty quickly. In which case, cynical I think learns Smokescreen just before it evolves, which could be really useful here. Just to play it a bit more on luck. Yeah, Attract was her um, signature move. Attract can only be used in the opposite gender Pokemon. Her Miltank's female. Miltank's always female, so can only be used in male Pokemon. Makes your Pokemon attracted, which gives that Poke your Pokemon only a 50% chance to even execute its attack. Every turn. And it Attract stays for a, a long time. You shouldn't be so serious, you, you child, you... <laughs> Sniffle, you meanie. And with that, we have beaten Whitney. Oh, no, you made Whitney cry. It's okay, she'll stop soon. She always cries when she loses. Really? What? What do you want? Oh, a badge! Oh, right, I forgot. Here is. The plain badge. Badge number three, obtained. It lets you use strength outside of battle. It also boosts your Pokemon speed. Oh, and you're gonna have this too. TM45. We didn't see it in the fights, but that's her signature move, Attract.
for how badly and how difficult that fight can go, that went pretty well. I'd say I'm pretty happy with that. It didn't... Wasn't there someone that said... That Whitney could help them with the tree, but we beat Whitney. So if Whitney can do it, then we should be do able to do it too? At least you were talking about battling skill, because we beat her. Hello. You know about the moving tree? If you want her, it jumps up in surprise. Oh, you're better than Whitney! Do you know about the moving tree? Yes. If you want it with a squirt bottle, it attacks. But since you have some badges, you should be okay. Thank you. This is basically, um, a watering can in the shape of a squirtle. Hence, it being called the squirt bottle. Maybe we can use this to help the tree. Help us with the tree. Joey, hello! My radish is looking awesome! I wish I could show you! Oh yeah, I managed to beat a tough caterpie. I need to make my party stronger. See you later. Well, Joey, if you'd like to battle, or at least show how good the radish is, we can battle! That is a thing that we can do. Guess not yet. Okay, I'm going to grab one TM for Headbutt and teach it to Togepi over Mudslap. Just to give it something to do, uh, something to use against things that resist fire. Because I don't expect Mudslap to be used much except against things like Magnemite. But then again, I have Flamethrower for it. And then I will see you at the tree. Okay, I was on my way to the tree when I suddenly got stopped and got a call from the bike shop. Oh, Reiner, our bicycle sales have gone through the roof. We owe it all to your advertising by riding around on our bicycle. As, your, as our way of saying thanks, please keep that bicycle. Thanks again. And with that, a free bicycle. We didn't even need to pay one million poker dollars. We also didn't need um, to get a bike voucher from someone in Vermilion City from a Pokemon fan club. We got it for free, we helped advertising, and we were allowed to keep it. And just to show you, uh, if you try to participate in a bug hatching contest again, it says the contest is over, and you can't participate. My next opportunity will be in three days from now, on Tuesday. Now here is that tree. The tree that supposedly moves strangely, reacts strangely to water. Let's see what that's about. Let's water it with the score ball. The weird tree doesn't like the squirt bottle. The weird tree attacked? What's that about? It's a Pokemon. This is Pseudo Wudo. A rock Pokemon, actually. That acts like it's a tree. I remember the Pseudo Wudo episode in the anime where there were two researchers arguing whether it was either a rock type or a grass type. And this is the only place in the entirety of the second generation of Pokemon games where you can't catch a Pseudo Wudo. If you catch it here, you can breed it to get more. Um, but this is the only place where you can catch and where you can get Pseudo Wudo. to use Fury Cutter again because that'll make it too weak. It's in the red. So now Fury Cutter again, that because it's weak, should be able to get it a bit lower. I feel pretty safe with this unfortunate war bandit. Let's get taken out. Should I send I think I'll send in um put it? Put it to sleep. I could send in Breeze as well. 
this brings a sleep powder now, which is more accurate than hypnosis. But I'd like to keep the friendship up for Breeze, because I'm considering giving it the TM for return later. I won't stream tomorrow on Sunday, but maybe if... But, uh, okay, well, that flutters. Uh, I was thinking of getting the TM for return. I think I want the TM for return for both the Jetpack and for Breeze. Not for the others, but for Jetpack and Breeze. To give them a bit more of a, just a standard attack that they can use. Alright, Breeze is faster, that's helpful. Sudobudo has a pretty low catch rate, a cat low catch rate of 65. It's definitely not the lowest, um, but it's definitely not high either, so it can be quite difficult to catch. We do have, do have two Great Balls, which we could use. Let's try a Pokeball first. Didn't quite get it. Sudo stays asleep. Let's try a Great Ball instead. And we have ourselves a Pseudo Wudo. Any suggestions for a nickname chat? Do we have any? I haven't thought of a nickname for Pseudo Wudo. Pseudo Wudo, the imitation Pokemon. Although it always pretends to be a tree, its composition appears to be closer to a rock than a plant. We will give it a nickname. Remember that Aerodactyl back in the Book on Blue walkthrough, which was Tree Sap? We could make this one just Tree, because that like, this- I'm not gonna give it a fancy nickname, this is just Tree, actually. It's not really a tree, but it looks like a tree, so it's called Tree. This is Tree. Pseudo Wudo is gone, and with that, we're back here. Interestingly, um, in Pokemon Crystal, there's a grass patch over here where you can catch some Pokemon. But because this route is Route 36, no, 5. No, it's still 6, yeah. 5 is above Goldenrod, and that's 6. Yeah, then 7 above it. This, this grass patch is also 36, so here we can catch like between level 10 and 14 Pokemon now. But because that's the same route as the grass patch here in Crystal, and you can access this before the first gym, there's like level 4, 5, 6 Pokemon in Crystal here, which means this grass patch also has level 4, 5, 6 Pokemon in Crystal. Did you clear that wretched tree? I'm impressed. I want you to have this. We get TM08 for Rock Smash, which isn't a very strong move. Only 20 power in this game, I think, was up to 40 in Gen 4, so Diamond and Pearl. Um, but this is something I will be teaching to Heracross if it has a fighting move to use. Especially useful against Rock and Steel types that resist um, Horn Attack. It's fainted war bandits, but obviously when it's fainted, it can still learn a new move. It's completely logical. I'll get rid of Leer. So that's Rock Smash for War Bandits. What I'm now going to do is heal up my Pokemon in Violet City. And then I think we'll deliver that mail. So that's sleeping guy. I have added to my team, bye bye the Abra. As you can see, it has the flower mail attached. I attach it from the box. That is the mail that we received, and then attached to Kenya the Spiro. Well, we want to keep Kenya the Spiro, so we are going to deliver it alongside something else. Huh? Was that you have mail for me? I do. Here's Abra. Let's see. Dark cave leads to another room. That's good to know. Thanks for bringing this to me. My friend's a good guy, and you're a swell guy too. I'd like to go do something good and return to. I know, I want you to have this. Where we get a Tim from? Tim for Nightmare. If the opponent is asleep, Nightmare cuts their HP. I wouldn't say it's a very good move. 
Also because the Pokemon that generally learn the move Nightmare only learn Hypnosis, which is only 60% accurate, and the moment they wake up, Nightmare ends. Which makes sense, and Nightmare ends when, you, when you've woken up, but still, it's... I wouldn't say it's a great move. I don't intend to teach it anything. I'm going to grab Hoot Hoot back from the box because I put flutters in there for just a moment. Because now that we have Rock Smash on flutters, also this is tree. We just caught it. It's a slime. We're going to use flutters and flash to light up Dark Cave one more time, and then use Rock Smash that we now have on Heracross, it's on War Bandit, to allow us to explore just a little bit more. We might even find a Dunsparce. I don't think... Even though earlier on this stream I was called by Hiker Anthony to say that there's more Dunsparce, but that, I'm not sure how long that lasts. Rock Smash can actually give you an encounter. I think it's always level 10. And it's a Krabby! Huh. Oh, level 15 even. No, 10 was uh, Headbutt. You can get 15 in the Rock Smashes. So that's actually really useful if you happen to have a Pokemon with Rock Smash, considering it do it's not an HM, it doesn't require a gym bat to use. If in a Crystal Randomizer Speed Choice, so if you're doing like a bingo or something like that, and you're playing... Uh, and your starter or something you catch really early on has Rock Smash, then it's probably worth to check out this rock and try and catch Pokemon. If, if it's anything somewhat decent, then the fact that it's level 15 this early on in the game can help you um, gain a lot of time early on. Hopefully it's a decent Pokemon with some decent moves. Geodude can be caught here as well. I did see, uh, show you at the very start of the series in episode 1 you can catch a Route 46 too. This is another way. That's the animation of Rock Smash, you'll probably see it a few times. It's only 20 base power, it's fighting type, so is War Bandit, so with Stab, the same type of attack bonus, it becomes a 30. But still just under half of the power of Horn Attack, but against Rock and Seal types especially, I do intend to use Rock Smash. Not quite sure where this part of the game goes completely. I know there's some weak Pokemon, with level 2s and level 3s. So, actually, I'm going to use the one repel that my mom gave me earlier on in the stream. I took it out of the box. So now we can explore a bit easier. I hit him here. Hyper Potion. Not bad. Well, they end up in the same place as here. Yeah, same place. Heal. I like that because we have a few of those already. This rock smash just leads us to a different exit. Now, where would that end up? We'll find out in a moment. First, we have a rock smash battle. We get another Krabby. On attack. Just in case there's another item here. Doesn't look like it. No. Might be hidden item somewhere there. And we get an encounter on the last square. And it is a Dunsparce too! <laughs> Actually, let's just catch that Dunsparce then. Let's catch Dunsparce. Uh, we don't really have anything to weaken it though. Even Fury Cutter or something like that. Because we're all level 16 or 18. He's going to take it as a Poison Powder. Actually, might help. Might be the best because we could just use hypnosis and then throw balls. What's the catch rate of a Dunsparce? 190. It's actually not that hard. To, not that easy. Uh, no, not that hard to catch. That's right. So let's send in flutters, use hypnosis, and then just throw pokeballs. We have a pretty good chance. Otherwise, um, 
poison powder could work weaken it a bit. And at one point, it's actually pretty certain that it's actually get the capture. So if this doesn't work out, we can just switch. And skip. Them. Not going to use the down sparse, but I was not really looking for it. But I guess also we are we were, and the hiker Anthony helped us uh, to find this one. Thinking of maybe deleting his number later, but I do want to rematch. I know everyone that I've. I'm not sure if every trainee you can get the phone number of can rematch you. I know the ones I have so far can. Schoolboy Jack, Hiker Anthony, uh, Youngster Joey. They can all rematch you. So I want to have rematch everyone at least once. Actually, you can rematch multiple times, so maybe I'll just keep him. Let's delete him if I need one more spot. But I have four more. And there's only one more that I really want to add on Route 38. Right, we got ourselves a Dunsparce. Dunsparce, the land snake Pokemon. When spotted, this Pokemon escapes backwards by furiously boring into the ground with its tail. And your name will be... Drill Fairy. Because it looks a little, little bit fairy type, like, well, fairy like with the little wings. And it has a drill. As its tail. Nice, we cut ourselves a dance first. Where are we now? Well, it's a place with the paralysis cure berry. And a standard berry. There's a ledge here, there's a ledge here, not much we can do. But this is actually Route 46. And there's a guy there, so we're... And I think there might be some trainers over there too. I'll check in just a moment, but there's a guy here. This is Route 46. Remember that route that we could access at the very start of the game? Because you start on Route 29. This is the first route you encounter. <clears throat> and then I show you that little area where you can catch you, dude. This is that route. You can access it from the top of exiting from Dark Cave. As the mail suggested, uh, that was given to uh, the sleeping, yawning man, Dark Cave has multiple exits. It leads to different routes. This is just one of them. There are multiple exits. <coughs> it's more than just the two we've seen so far. <coughs> Pretty useful so far, Rock Smash, and it's lowering their defense. Sure, I get the KO on the second one, but no. I've already dealt over half damage, so that should be possible. Warband level 19 tries to learn Fury Attack. Not a great move. Effectively, it could it could be higher da our damage output than Horn Attack, but that's only if it hits, because it doesn't have 100% accuracy, and it needs to hit multiple times. Like quite a few times, so we're not actually going to learn Fury Attack. It's sending scales. I think it's first fight as a Croconaut. Yeah, let's use Ice Punch. He 
you might think that's a punch, so that's physical, so it's not that great against Geodude, even though it's super effective. Not quite. Remember, in Generation 2, uh, moves are physical or special depending on their type. Ice-type moves are always special. Including Ice Punch. I like the elemental punches. And the fact that you can just get them as a TM. You get really good coverage with moves like this. So, hey, look, there's this grass patch that we have found at the very start. Back in episode one. And because it's accessible in episode one, the Pokémon here are just very low, level level 2 and level 3. Now, I do wonder, because I don't quite remember... ...what there is to find... ...above that ledge. So I'm actually going to go through Dark Cave once more. YouTube edit won't see this. Um, and just see what's on the other end of that. I think I put one crystal. There's two trainers there. I'm not quite sure if that's gold and silver. Usually, a lot of those things in trainer locations are the same, but it's possible that there's a difference. So let's go check a look. All right, I'm back here. Now we'll take the left ledge, and there is a trainer here, and I believe. One square down, one square left from him is a girl who looks the other way. I'm glad I went here, because I'd like to show things up. Maybe not a lot of people went to this area. So they don't even know it exists. Nothing too special here, I suppose. But this is a walkthrough. I want to show off as much as possible. Especially things that people might not already know. I consider this area one of them. Ugh, low kick hurts. And it flinched me, that's not nice. Go, Breeze. Go use your flying type to take care of this monkey. Just like how you can use your grass type to take care of your units. If you have neither type in your arsenal. Neither. I thought. Same location. Maybe she's standing in a different spot compared to Crystal, though. I race Pokemon too! Let's battle! I want to say she has a Ponyta. Let's see if I was right. She does have a Ponyta. Level 19 for Breeze. Oh, well. That was against a fire type, too. Flinch, please. Thank you, Flinch again. Please. Or that. I'll take it. Skip Loom just beat two fire types. They were only. Three levels lower, well, two levels lower previously. Gained some really nice experience. Well, that was this area, at least as much of Route 46 as we can show so far, so. I think next up, we're going back to where Sudo Wudo was, and continuing on to the next city. I'll see you there.
actually, I'm not going to do that yet, because now that I'm close to New Bark Town, I want to show Professor Elm what hatched from the egg. Here's the Togepi! It gives us an Everstone, that is a held item, and if you give it to a Pokémon, um, they are unable to evolve. So let's say Cro uh, Totodom normally evolves to Croconide level 18, and even if the evolution animation comes up, you can still hold the B button and it'll cancel the evolution. If you hold, uh, uh, make it hold the Everstone, the evolution animation won't even start. The Pokémon just cannot evolve. 